Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Mark Shore, and I'm the uh, professor for your course. And uh, this recording is just an overview of your course, how it's laid out and that sort of thing. And also this video is for two courses, College Algebra and also Probability and Statistics, both courses here. And the reason is, is because both courses are laid out the same. And I'll show you the features of both during this video. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now and show you how to get to your course and, and all that material. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And um, here we go. Okay, so I believe you should be seeing up here. And we're on the college's uh, Brightspace site. And uh, you can get to that by just going to the college webpage. And then you just uh, click on my ACM and you can pull down to get to uh, Brightspace and then use your credentials, username and password to get onto Brightspace. That's where all of the links for the course are located. So uh, you'll see either probability and statistics or maybe you're in the college algebra course. Uh, and when you go to a course like this on Brightspace, you might say, well, where, where's all my material? Well, it's all under content. So if you click content, then you can see everything. And you want to start by looking at the overview. And the overview tells you, it gives you this video link right here, which is the video you're seeing. And um, it tells about the course, talks about uh, My Open Math, which is the where everything is located. You go to Brightspace to get to My Open Math, which is abbreviated MOM. And that's where all your homework assignments, uh, tasks, uh, and uh, also even your grade book is located within My Open Math. And uh, on this overview, it also uh, talks about where you can get help through the videos, the textbook. There's videos on the textbook in the start of every section and also in the uh, exercise set of every section. And there's also videos linked and uh, written examples linked on the homework problems within My Open Math. And there's also a math form on there, and I'll show you all that uh, information. And there's also a way on My Open Math that you can message me. And the uh, messaging and forum feature on My Open Math is much better than email or even Brightspace because it attaches your problem to the problem, uh, to the message, and also to the math form automatically. So that's nice. And also, it, it allows you to type in math uh, font that you know you can really see what you're talking about. So anyway, there's my email. This I would use only for non-math issues, uh, like you're sick or something and can't get uh, make a test at a particular time or some issue like that. Um, uh, but I would use the math form or the message feature on my open math for math questions. And you'll see that I'll show you that in a little bit. So uh, that's the information. So you can read through that right there. And then we go on down to the table of contents area and start here. Um, we'll go through that real quick. And, uh, and I know you can go through this on your own, but there's a course introduction just tells you the course. And uh, I may be using this video for a while, but uh, in initial tasks to complete, uh, then uh, meet your instructor. And I'll show you something here. This is again saying the things about My Open Math, the email, uh, and that sort of thing. And uh, so that's really the information in that area. And then moving on, uh, uh, netiquette, expectations. And then here is your textbook link. Now, as long as you didn't opt out of anything uh, during registration, you will have a textbook link right here. If you're late in registering, it usually takes about a day for this to, uh, to show up on your site. So uh, this is for the College Outer book. You just click read now and you got it uh, because it's part of your tuition. So uh, hopefully you didn't opt out unless you already had the book from a previous year or something like that. So, uh, and that's true on both. And I'll show you where we are here. See, all we did is we went through the start here area and now we're down to textbook. And I'll switch over to um, uh, the probability and statistics area. So up here, you can switch your different courses and show you that it's the same thing that you click on content to get to your content and you have your overview like we just went over. And then you have your start here that we just, just showed. 
And I'll go through that real quick and show you that it's the same. I thought I had maybe some extra information here, but uh, let me your instructor. Let me just check that one second and see if that's any different. Uh, yeah, I do show here. I show the uh, the uh, uh, grade book on my open math, how it works. And I'll do that in college algebra and copy that over too. But I'm going to show that here too. So let's uh, continue on with the content. The textbook, by the way, um, has the videos in it. It also explains how the Excel sheets work in either course. And also when you click on it and it opens here, I'll go ahead and do that. Click on that. And then you open the textbook. See like this is a probability and statistics textbook. And you just click read now. Um, some of the questions in the homework assignments will refer to the textbook and uh, not all of them. So if you don't have the textbook, like you uh, enrolled late, in the course uh, and you don't have the textbook the very first day, then you can do other homework problems that don't refer to the textbook. But like I say, like here's section two one, you can go through the different chapters right here. Like here's chapter one and you can do the pull down if you wanna to go to a particular section, like here's section uh, chapter one and here's section one two. And you see this has two videos that you can just click on right here and watch videos of uh, this material. And then at the end of this section, you can just scroll down. And uh, at the end of this section, it's not a big section, there's a video showing almost all of these homework problems uh, being worked out right here. So you, and there's also uh, answers, if you just wanna look at the answers to these homework problems, uh, there's a uh, thing at the end, solutions to homework problems, you can click on that. And I'll show you answers to, I think, odd problems there. Now your homework problems on my open math will either be referred to these problems, uh, homework problems, or they could even refer to examples, or they could be often they're completely uh, new problems that are uh, uh, problems similar, or at least problems that go over the same topic of the section that we're in. So uh, that's how the uh, both textbooks work, whether it be college algebra or uh, probability and statistics. So let's go to um, back to Brightspace. And that was the textbook. And the syllabus is right here that tells you also things that I'm going over, how the course works and that sort of thing. So you should read that. And then you have your My Open Math link and we'll go over that in a second. There's also uh, online tutoring and face-to-face -face tutoring through the um, college and uh, that, that you uh, might be interested in. And uh, also down at the bottom is a Zoom link, which I also have on our My Open Math site. So this is for office hours. So uh, this is a totally uh, asynchronous course, which means we don't have scheduled class meetings, but we do have, I do have office hours that you can uh, join using this Zoom link here and uh, ask any questions that you have. Plus we have the math form and I'll show you that. So here we go into My Open Math. And if we click there, you are directly into your My Open Math site. So this is the My Open Math site for, for probability and statistics. And the My Open Math site for Math 102 looks exactly the same, just different dates and different topics are being covered. Here's the course calendar. You can always click on those and you can even click on the assignment right here and it will open it up or you can go down to that uh, unit and section and click on it. Like for example, I can go down here to chapters one and two, which is unit one. And here's section uh, chapter one. And then uh, the section I was on was, I think I clicked on this one right here, uh, compound probability. So if I click here, it'll open up. Uh, but it's nice that when you get go down here, you can see other videos that are not in the textbook. For example, here's a full in-class video for this section. So every section has a full in-class video. Plus when you go into the section, so I'll do that right now. There, here's your home, uh, homework assignment for homework two. Uh, when I start this, uh, you can, um, it tells you about it. Remember, uh, you only get one attempt on problems that refer to the textbook, but I think I, that may have changed. So always check that. And it says, um, uh, 
uh, but you get more than one attempt, actually five attempts, plus you can uh, regenerate new problems if you still miss the problem after five attempts. I'll show you that in just a second. So let's finally get to uh, the problem here. So, um, so this one says, using the table in section 1.2, uh, on gender and class in the textbook was it probably selecting a female that was in statistics. So this is saying referred to the textbook. So we would have the textbook open and let's go ahead and do that again here. So in the textbook, uh, and so I would just keep this open when you're doing the uh, homework so you don't close it like I did. And we'll click the read now. And I think it was 1.2. I'm just showing you how these uh, problems that refer to the textbook work. So if I go to section 1.2, I can either scroll down or I can just go here. So I'm in 1.2. Now let's see what that problem said here again. It said, let's see, is this here? Here, let's see. Here we go. It says, um, uh, using the table in section 1.2 on gender and class, in the textbook, what is the probability of selecting a female that was in statistics? Okay, so let's check this, find this table. So uh, female that was in statistics. Okay, here we go. Female statistics. Okay, so they had to be both here, female and in statistics. So that looks to be uh, 40 of them out of the total, which is 175. But see these, you'll see problems in here that go over it, and these videos go over this material too. So it looks like female, uh, female uh, in statistics, there's 40 people in there out of the total number of people, 175. So let's go back to the uh, uh, problem, make sure that's what it's asking. Uh, what is the probability of selecting a female that was in statistics? Type it as a fraction. I think it was 40 out of 175. And let's uh, submit that question. And notice, see, when you're clicking here, you get this whole equation menu. So it says, give your answer as a fraction. I just used a little slash key underneath the uh, question mark on the keyboard. And you definitely want to use a computer for this course, not a phone, and definitely not a Chromebook either, since they don't have hard drives. So uh, I'll show you the other way you could type this in is to uh, click this fraction bar and type in 40 over 175 like that. And I think that was, was the numbers. And boom, we got it right. Let's see, uh, I'll do another homework problem. I'll answer it wrong and let's see what happens. So I'm not gonna look this one up. You can do this one, but let's just make a guess and it's gonna be wrong. And then it says it's wrong. And it says next question or get a similar question. So you do get more than one example here. So, uh, so when I say get a similar question, it gave me a different one, see? And if I answer this one wrong, I'll just put in something here. And notice how this says enter text. Um, uh, so this one, you can't, it doesn't give you math because uh, it's just wanting some words here, like type the gender here, maybe it might be male or female, and it's referring to two, uh, two things here. So let me see what happens when I submit this. So of course that's wrong and then get similar question. And so it kind of takes you back to the, I think it's probably the last question that we had, but either way, you do get a lot of attempts here, even on the problems that are on the textbook. When you have a problem that's not related to the textbook, let's keep on going and get to one that's not related to the textbook. Like this one, here's the material right there. Now, when you type in your answer here, again, this is a numerical answer you can see with, a, with all this sort of stuff, then um, you can, even after five choices, five tries on that problem, you can, uh, you can uh, get a similar question. Now, you can still get a similar question, even if you miss it after one try. But notice I can change my answer in here. And... Uh, Maybe we can actually get it right here. Let's see. If one person is randomly selected from the group, was it probably that the person drives a car that is not red? Okay, let's see. Not red. There's 234. Let's do this. There's 234 that are total that are not red uh, or got a speeding ticket. How many people got a speeding ticket? The total number of people that got a speeding ticket is 30. 
Now, the only problem with that is that these 12 people here got counted twice. They got counted because they drive a car that's not red and also they got a speeding ticket. So we have to subtract those 12 people off. Now it's a probability. So it's out of the total number of people, which is 487. Now that's the right answer, but let's say I type something in wrong, which is often the mistake that people make. Then you can just, uh, I'll hit submit. You'll see it's wrong, but I can edit this question and type in and look over my work and then type in the correct answer. And so notice I'm not doing this on a calculator. I just do my work right there on the uh, sheet. It's, it doesn't round then, you get an exact answer. You gotta watch out if you use a calculator, then you gotta make sure that you're not rounding. Like don't use your phone as a calculator. Uh, if you do use a calculator uh, to do stuff, make sure it shows a lot of digits and carry it along the way. But again, the best thing to do is to just do your math right in here whenever you can. Okay, so that's the way that works. And even after my five tries would have run out, I still could have said, give me a similar problem. Now I'll go ahead and click that, give me a similar problem, because even when you get it right, you can click on get a similar problem. And also after the due date for this assignment or for any assignment, you can still click on the assignment and it will allow you to do uh, practice problems for uh, you know practice. You can't improve your grade or hurt your grade, but you can, um, you know, get extra uh, practice on these problems. Uh, we also have a practice test that's counted as your grade at the end of every unit before the test. And that's a thing that you wanna go through over and over again uh, so that maybe the first time you're using your uh, notes and written examples that are linked, but then, um, then you wanna be able to do that practice test in the amount of time as the actual test is due and also not using any written examples or videos like this because on the actual test, there are no written examples or videos linked. So um, my point is when you, you wanna get a similar question, you can do that uh, even if you get the question right. Now it's gonna look a lot like this, but you'll see that it has different numbers. See, same thing, it just randomly generates new numbers inside of the table. So that's the way that works. You don't have to finish any homework pro, uh, set at one setting. It has to be done by the due date. Uh, and that's listed on that calendar we have there on my open math. I'll go back to it here a second in a little bit. Um, that's when the, you have to have it done. So if you aren't done, I could close this right now and it would save what I've done. Uh, you know, so just get it done by the, uh, by the due date. Now, everybody has five late passes in this course. So what that means is that you can, uh, click on the homework assignment here. I'll go back to it and see if I can find it here. So like even in college algebra, it's the same way. So if you're on a uh, homework assignment here, I'll just click one and it's after the due date. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Um, so let's see, I think it's, I got too many things here open. So let's go out of here one second and go um, like down here to a homework assignment. If you, you see that this is due uh, August 26 at 11.59 PM, if it's after that point, you can use a late pass and you'll see LP right here, late pa pass allowed. And what that does, it extends the due date by 72 hours, which is equal to three days. So uh, it would extend the due date from 826, August 26 to August 29th. So uh, now for the problems that you do during that late pass period, you have a, um, it's a 10% reduction in cost. So for example, uh, if you had uh, a few problems to do in there, when you get them right, you won't get a full one out of one, you'll get 0.9 out of one. So it's best to do them uh, you know, before the due date. And you can always work ahead. I always have students that, uh, plenty of students that get done by uh, you know, a few weeks early in the semester and everything's up in the course at the beginning. You can even take your tests ahead of time. So, um, you can get through the course as fast as you like, but you can't go as slow as you like. You have to work the pace of the uh, calendar here. I always recommend students to get ahead of the course. That way uh, you don't have any issues with um, like, oh, I got sick or somebody was sick in my family or work called me in or something like that. So 
try your best to get ahead of the course as soon as possible in case of any emergencies. And that's a really good idea. Plus, it gives you more time when you're working on the practice test then to go over it and over it and over it so that you're good for the test. Nothing's timed except for tests in the course. And the bulk of the material come from tests. So um, let's see. So that's a lot of information right there. Now, your grade book, like I said, is also within My Open Math. So all you do is right here. You, it's not in Brightspace, it's in My Open Math, but it's a better grade book and it also allows you to see the problems and that, you know, everybody gets different problems in here too. They're regenerated. They're, um, it's called algorithmically generated where it puts random numbers in there and it has the formula used to uh, calculate it. So your grade book would be here. Now your grade book doesn't look like this and I sh I'll show uh, again what, what your grade book looks like. And so um, let's take a look at that one second here let me go to uh content and i think it was under um right here where the start here is and um so your gray book looks like this so on my open math when you go to the my open math link under brightspace you'll see gray book when you click on gray book then you have all your assignments show up and then you'll see your score, like this person got a 9.7 out of 10 on homework zero and so on. So if they, if it's after the due date, as soon as the due date is over, see like this one right here uh, was like nine, two of 20 or whatever. As soon as that's through, you can click there. As soon as it's past the due date, you can click there and it will not only show you uh, what questions you got right or wrong, but it will also show you the correct answers to uh, these these problems in this homework assignment. And occasionally I'll put feedback on uh, some problems. Those problems are mostly problems that aren't automatically graded. And uh, those are in probability and statistics. Uh, everything in college algebra is pretty much automatically graded and uh, it, it gets it really, really quick. Um, and you can see that this person got uh, 17 out of 18 on the practice test, tells them how long you they worked on it. Now, some of these are unrealistic because what happens is when they open like homework four here, uh, it just keeps track of from when they open it till the last time they worked on it. So uh, here's the amount of time they actually were on the questions. But still, that's like five hours they spent on that. But notice how good they did on the test. They got a 93.3%. Now, when you uh, scroll down to the bottom of this area of the gray book on Myopa Math, you will see your totals here. So this is your total percentage in homework, practice tests, and tests. That is either past due, past due, and you attempted things after, you know, that are due later. And what your grade is on all material if you would just quit the course right now. So like this person has a, uh, right now their grade is at this point in the course, it's a 91.8%. They've done some extra things. And at this, at this point, using the extra things that they could still work on, you know, like beyond the due dates, they're, they are uh, farther ahead in the course. They have a 91.5%. And because it's still early in the course, if they stopped right now, they would only have a C in the course. But they didn't do that. They continued on and uh, got a, a good um, a grade in the course. So, so if you say, what's my grade right now? Here it is. Uh, uh, you know, this is what your grade would be if you just quit right now, which nobody does that, but you, it keeps a running total out of the grand total. See, this is a grand total number of points in the course, and this is what they have out of that grand total. This is what they have, how many points they have correct, out of everything that's past due that they can't work on anymore. And here's what they have that they have worked on that they can still work on right now, okay? Uh, that's... And again, they can work on all these things that, that are not past due. So that's the way the grade book works right there. So it's really useful. Uh, and you can see the right answers after the due date and all that stuff. And I, I really like this system. I spent a lot of time developing this system and working on it uh, so that, you know, it gives you all the amount of uh, tries you want or that you need to, to be successful in the course. Now, in the course, I'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, talk about this, uh, just looking over my notes. Uh, so again, places to get help. Let's, let's show you that again. So when we go to uh, My Open Math and we're in a, uh, 
an assignment, no matter which course it is. So I'll just click on this first one right here. Then uh, a lot of these uh, problems have either written example or video or both. So like this problem right here, I think there's a little written example on it. And it says the probability that an event does not happen is equal to one minus. So that it just gives you a little sentence right there. But if we move along and you can jump down to any problem, let's go down to some of the last problems. This one has a written example and it gives you a example actually on this one. And you would find a similar example in the textbook too. How many outcomes would there be in this? And it, it works it out for you with the solution. And you see that's very similar to the question that it was asked. And uh, I don't know how many, we have very many videos here, but like here's one on roulette. It's a roulette table, it describes it here. Uh, here's a video that, that's linked to show you how a roulette table works. And then look down here, it shows video one, video two, and post the form. I'll show you post the form here real quick. So with post the form, the way that works is um, you would uh, see it automatically shows your question to everybody in the class. So it's fine that uh, some people might be embarrassed about that. I've heard that before, but I mean, you have to be able to, if you're going to ask a question, everybody uh, has the ability to help you in the class, including me. So then what you do is here's your question and it will show what you tried. And then you can type in something like, I tried to do this, I did this, but don't just post the question without showing what you did. Because that basically is saying, um, I want you to do my homework for me. So there's a lot of places that you can get help before you send it to the form. So what you do is you use the, uh, use the textbook, use the videos, use the written examples, use the full length videos that are that are attached to your uh, myopa mass site. And then when you don't get it, say, well, here's what I, you know, even when I see your answer here and I see that it's wrong, I don't know what you did. So you need to say, I did this, I did, you know, this type of thing. Now, some things might be very obvious, like it's just a fraction, you typed in the wrong fraction. And again, often the mistake is just people make typos, either they read a number or they type in the wrong number or so on like that. So this is where you would type in, you know, I, uh, I did this and so on like that. And you can even attach files here and so on. Now, a lot of times this leads into this is that we're using uh, an Excel workbook, which is linked to your MyOpen Math site for the course. So for college algebra, it's this 102N sheet. And for uh, statistics, it's ESP4 sheet. So you can see they look very, very similar. What you do is you it, uh, each section uses a different sheet. Like in statistics, it might be binomial sheet or the raw data sheet and that sort of thing. And in uh, college algebra, it could be the linear sheet. Uh, here, I'll open this up a little bit. Linear, quadratic, and so on. And you probably want to open these up full string so that you can see everything on them. Now, these sheets, whether it be for statistics or college algebra, are, are made that you type it, you can type in the white cells and it gives you answers and the green cells. So you don't have to work out a lot of things by hand in these, uh, these courses, it does a lot for you. Like here in this raw data sheet, if I type in uh, some raw data going down here, um, I'll just do a few. You can see it calculates the mean, median range, sample variance, population variance, first quartile, you can type in here to get a trim mean. You can type in here to get a type in a percentage and it will give you the percentile that uh, all that sort of thing. So it gives you everything. It does uh, so much for you to get uh, that you don't have to work out very many things by hand at all. And it's uh, that's also true with the 102 in sheet for college algebra. So some people ask me, well, what calculator do I need? Well, really, almost everybody uses the Excel sheets and don't, doesn't use a, a calculator. In fact, I would say everybody does because these sheets are just so much easier to use than a graphing calculator. Now, I do have a graphing calculator on your site, which most people use is just a calculator, or you can use any calculator for your calculator, but it's on your MyOpenMath site under course materials, and it's just a Casio calculator. And you can use that if you like, or again, use any nice calculator. And again, if you have any calculations that need done, you can just do them within the MyOpen Math cell if it's a calculated problem. I mean, as long as it's not something that just says 
what's the gender of something, you know, or uh, how many people are there. That doesn't require, require any arithmetic, but if it requires arithmetic, you'll see it's a, it's a calculator type problem. But you just go to the different sheets here to get to them. And you can like, if I have a Z score of just making something up here, 2.1, you see it just calculated the probability of the left, probably the right. And the textbook and the textbook videos and all these things are linked with this, these Excel sheets that they say, oh, we'll go to this uh, Excel sheet, go to your Z and T sheet and go to the third section down. And, you know, someone like that, that you might be using, see like this is the third section, I might tell you what to use or what to do in your examples uh, in the textbook itself. It actually shows these Excel sheets and the videos show these Excel sheets too. So really it's been like over the last 20 years that I've put together the Excel sheets, I've put together the videos, put together the uh, my open math generated problems. And, you know, I just have thousands and thousands of hours into uh, developing this, these course materials that uh, really you won't find at any other college to tell you the truth. And that's why our success rates in these courses are just uh, gigantic compared to um, other colleges and university. General around the country, you see a pass rate around 50%. Our pass rate in uh, probability statistics is above 80% and the, pro and the uh, success rate in um, uh, college algebra is above 70%. So, uh, you know, it's about 75% in the one and 80% in the other, which is really, really high compared to national averages. And that's because you can't hardly uh, make a mistake if you type this, the material into the correct cell it's gonna get you the answer. You're not having to go through and using these formulas. I show the formulas here, but you do not have to use these formulas to look answers up in tables like they did in the 1950s. You have this material. So um, now if you have Excel, I'm just looking at my notes here. If you have Excel on your desktop, that is great because you will get this Excel version that looks like this. And you can tell it real quick because uh, there's buttons on it and, um, these buttons have little macros. Like if you click here, you see a, it does a random number here. And, uh, but if you don't have Excel, then don't use Sheets or something like that that's on Google. Use, um, use, your, uh, one uh, use your email and on your email, you will see a, uh, the apps. And one of the apps is Excel. And that will give you the uh, uh, web version of Excel. Now, the web version of Excel isn't as awesome as the web version is a free version of Excel. And the free version of anything doesn't, they won't give you all the features, but it will work uh, for the course. And it just doesn't look as nice. The buttons don't work here and that sort of thing. But I don't want to make anybody go uh, get the real version of Excel. But if you do have the real version of Excel, it definitely is nice. Like, for example, uh, a lot of things are just copying and that sort of thing, like here, copy. Uh, we'll copy a table that's made up. So I, I'll show you that real quick. Um, so let's see, we wanted this in like two groups and see it did a table for you. Now you want this same table over in the group data sheet. Well, what it will do when you click this copy button is it copies it over. Not a big deal. If you don't have the copy button or it doesn't work for you for some reason, like you're using the web version of Excel, then you would just have to retype that table in on this other sheet. Now that's true on um, other sheets too. Like there's an ANOVA sheet, the last sheet that we use is called ANOVA in this course. And when you type in your data over here, it is a little copy values button and you say yes. But if you don't have that button working because you're using the web version of Excel, then you have to go over here and get these values that would be in here and um, uh, retype them or copy paste special them into this area right here. And again, use, if you're ever copy and pasting within Excel, use copy paste special. Uh, so these are all things that are explained in your uh, uh, book there. So, okay, so I'll stop right there. And uh, again, my office hours are listed on the uh, uh, My Open Math site under the Zoom link that we have. Let me see if I can uh, show that. And you are not required to attend office hours, uh, but that is a good place to uh, come even for a short period of time if you just have uh, some question. And uh, again, that's listed on the, your My Open Math site under the uh, Zoom link. And let's see if we can find it. There's your course materials. 
Um, and down here is a Zoom link with office hours listed and that sort of thing. And you just click on it and boom, you can attend the office hours. So I'll stop right there. And uh, let me stop the screen share. And uh, uh, hopefully everything goes good for you in the course and keep uh, in contact with any questions that you have. Okay, thanks a lot.